Welcome to Electron Line. Here's a second example of how to solve a rotational motion problem using graphical techniques. In this case, an object is already moving. It's already rotating at 100 revolutions per second. It will end up with a velocity or angle of velocity at zero revolutions per second. And during that time, however long it took, the distance covered is 50 revolutions. They want to know the angular acceleration. So you notice here they did not give us the time, how long it took for the object to slow down from 100 revolutions per second to zero. Also notice that the units are given in revolutions rather than radians. Well, we can probably get away with that, not having to convert if the answer is finally then given in revolutions per second squared in our final answer. If you want radians per second squared, then we'll have to convert that as well. So next we're going to draw a graph. And we like to start with the omega versus time graph. That's usually the best one to use. We have an initial omega of 100 revolutions per second. And notice that eventually the speed goes down to zero. So here we have zero revolutions per second. And we're not given the time. So let me move this over a little bit. So time is equal to question mark. We don't know what that is. But we do know that the area underneath the curve, the area equals theta, meaning the angular distance traveled. And that was given. So they gave us the value for the area. We also know that the slope represents the angle acceleration. And the angle acceleration can be found then by calculating the slope of this. So we can say that the angle acceleration is equal to the slope which is equal to the rise divided by the run. In this case, it's a negative rise. It's actually a drop because it's a negative acceleration. So we know that the drop is going to be 100 revolutions per second. So it's a minus 100 revolutions per second. But we don't know what the run is. We don't know the amount of time elapsed. So what we need to do first is use the information we got about the area to find the time elapsed. So we can say that theta is equal to the area, which is equal to one half the base times the height. So in this case, theta, which is a known quantity, we can say that 50 revolutions is equal to one half times the base, and the base will be the time elapsed, which we don't know, so we put down the value for that, t times the height, and the height here is 100 revolutions per second. Solving this for time, notice we can put the 2 over there, we got the 100 revolutions per second over here, that means we get 50 revolutions times 2 divided by 100 revolutions per second is equal to time, and if we work that out, we get time is exactly equal to 1 second. Now that we know that the elapsed time is one second, we can plug that in here. And so we write one second, and therefore the angle acceleration is 100, minus 100 revolutions per second per second, or minus 100 revolutions per second squared, which means that each second, the rotational velocity is 100 revolutions per second less than the second before. Of course, in this case, it only did that for one second, going from 100 to zero in one second, and that would then be the angle revolution. The, that would then be the angle acceleration. And that's how we do that using the graphical solutions.